This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clunase Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.58 p.m. on June 10th, 2020. Welcome. This is our midweek Wednesday strategic webinar. For all you new members, as you know, we do one on Sunday night. We do one on hump day, which is Wednesday. And if things get really crazy in the markets, we do another one during whichever day that we have to deal with. But generally, we do two solid, uh, comprehensive webinars. I know the last one was very comprehensive. And um, and these things are uh, extremely useful. As you get used to our service here at Clueless State Trading, and before I go any further, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. So as I was saying, primarily for newer members who are waiting for more people to come in, because um, I did say the session would begin at nine, um, is that uh, you're going to get used to this stuff. You know, a lot of things that we're going to talk about, things I like to highlight, things you should know about, so you're more knowledgeable about the markets. You're going to see how correct and how they are predictive and how they happen like we're explaining these things before they happen it happens a lot in our service okay so get used to it so this will keep you more prepared more grounded the volatility and the heavy duty back and forth in the markets won't be as scary they'll certainly be scary no question about it that's what volatility is meant to do but they won't be as scary as what you're used to you know back in your old way of looking at things Use your own instincts. The ultimate decision is always yours. Whether you want to do a trade, not do a trade, whether you want to get out of a trade or whatever you want to do, the ultimate decision is always yours. All we're doing is providing some extremely powerful, resourceful tools, which will hopefully help you keep less, uh, hopefully keep you guys less emotional and more technical and more tactical in the way you're handling your trades and the way you're looking at markets. Okay. So that's one. Of, that's our mission statement. We try to do as uh, our, our, our. I put in my best efforts to promote that <coughs> type of methodology. So, um, saying all that, a couple of broader points, and then we're going to get into a whole bunch of charts. We're going to look at a few stocks. We'd like to end this, you know, at a reasonable time, so that you know we're not all exhausted by the time it, this session is done. Well, look, the market's come a long way. The NASDAQ broke through 10,000 repeatedly, two days in a row. Or is it three days in a row? I lose track. Uh, some stocks are just nonstop. We just uh, nailed Tesla repeatedly over the past month, two months, past couple of weeks, and past couple of days. Okay? Swing charts are showing stock can go a lot higher. In between, there's going to be a pullback. No question about it. That's just the way it is. All right. That's just the way it is. Apple is nonstop. Um, Facebook is doing very well. NVIDIA, what can I say? I missed the last leg of the run. I know our friend Paul here is a uh, uh, big uh, uh, trader in NVIDIA. So congratulations. So it just seems like you're trying to catch, you're trying to jump on a uh, fast moving bullet train. And it's tricky. I mentioned that in my previous videos that when markets just on a uh, not the overall market per se, but certain sectors of stock are just hell bent on going up like a rocket ship, it's difficult to get in. It's difficult to get uh, a solid entry point, even though you can jump in, make yourself a quick couple of points. Look at Beyond today. I, I showed the stock at around four and change before you knew it, it was uh, six and change. You know, a 44% gain. I scalped it, left a little bit in there, okay? Because that stock also has a lot of room to move. But I'm talking about two aspects of trading. One is day trading, one is swing trading. So as you newer uh, members, newer traders get to learn how this business works, you can scalp, day trading scalp, or you can swing a trade overnight or over a couple of days or a week. Um, 24 to 48 hours and bang, goes nuts, right? It's shown you a whole bunch of them. Shown you a whole bunch of them. Um, Tesla is a prime example of it, an extreme example of it, okay? Who's, who's to say that the stock was going to be up, uh, God knows, you know, 84 points um, just from last night? Could have bought those calls at a buck. 
and they went to six dollars and changed. These are the eleven hundred calls. They went to six dollars and forty-five cents. So even if you sold it at the open, you still got around four dollars. That's three hundred a three bagger and two hundred percent ROI on your money. Okay. So these type of things happen in markets and it happens in many different types of stocks. All right. So a couple of big things happening. Number one, the market is getting quite overbought. We're going to look at some technical signals and overbought positions and stuff, but that doesn't mean that we're going into a bear market. That just means we can come in for a quick shot. We have three days, red days so far. And very, we very well could have an early red day tomorrow, for all I know. It is Father's Day weekend. I'm a father. I should know. No, I don't. This weekend, right? On Sunday? Uh, it's next weekend? No, yeah, you're right. You're right. The following yeah. weekend. The following weekend, not it this weekend, following. right? Yeah. yeah, that's why I said I didn't keep yeah. track of that. Okay, okay, so that's fine. So generally, you don't want to short the market in any definitive way prior to these big holidays, all right? Uh, that's just the na nature of the beast, and that's what I've seen over the years. So given that it's not uh, Father's Day weekend this Sunday, uh, so that means, um, you know, there is a possibility we get a, uh, you know, we, we get a technical pullback. And my chart here directly that's staring at your face is telling you exactly where we can go. Um, and we're going to get into that in, in, in a minute. And these are a couple of hundred point type of drops that you should be getting used to. You know, 300 points down, almost goes even, then pulls back. Standard procedure. That's the nature of volatility. That's where position management comes into play. Not every stock will go down with it. Certain stocks will go up in the face of uh, uh, down markets. Happened today, um, and, uh, and 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 cer certain stocks, you know, will uh, like Boeing, which went through the roof um, when we called it at 125, went to almost uh, 219 It went to. So now it's pulled back. Now it's pulled back to 196. Uh, yeah, went to 230. No, what am I saying? Boeing actually went to 235. And then now we are pulling back and I'll show you the chart on Boeing. Nothing alarming. It's a, it's, it looks like a bull flag or a cup and handle. I'll show that to you in a second. And entry points in Boeing are coming up and pretty much here at this point. Stock was down 20 today. So saying all that, um, the other thing that's happening is we are starting to get reports from certain states, Texas primarily, uh, of a sharp rise and a couple of other states out there, a sharp rise in coronavirus COVID-19 cases. Okay. And uh, so this is uh, nothing to be too alarmed about, but it is something to keep an eye on. There's certainly something to keep an eye on. You know, if there is a sudden rise in hospitalizations, and debts, uh, it's not going to be fun. <clears throat> the economy is going into a reopening phase. You don't want to see a sharp rise in COVID-19 cases like we have seen in a bunch of states. So there's a couple of things going on here, all right? Um, on top of that, certain stocks are quite overvalued on a short-term basis, and uh, they can certainly uh, come in for a uh, quick landing. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. There are no other real dangers. Uh, you have, while I'm talking, you know, I'm just showing you, uh, I'm just pulling up some of my preset charts. Why isn't it letting me show up? Um, the Federal Reserve came into play today. They did exactly what they should do. No rate hikes till 2022. They're going to basically promote their stimulative monetary policies, simple English pump a lot of money into the economy uh, through many different mechanisms to make sure that the economy stays in good shape. So they are in no rush to raise rates. They'll be very cooperative with the fiscal stimulus, which is coming out of the federal government. I believe we have a fourth stimulus package or third stimulus package in the works right now. Both the Republicans and Democrats are talking. It's a good thing. And that's also going to shove in more money in the pockets of the U.S. Uh, um, consumer. So the Federal Reserve was good to go. They did pay, paint a picture of a rather weak U.S. economy. 
going forward, but next year they're expecting the GDP to jump quite sharply. And if we don't have a resurgence or spike in coronavirus, COVID-19 cases, and the economy moves along, then obviously the markets will explode a lot higher, as I have shown on um, on my uh, multiple charts, including last uh, uh, last Sunday's webinar. We can blow through new highs. We can. But that is also dependent on the fact that uh, uh, whether or not, uh, for reasons I just explained, all right? We need to have a stabilization in COVID-19 cases in states which are starting to see a rise. Uh, we need to see economic numbers uh, starting to stabilize. Jobless numbers, very important. Every week, every, every uh, um, major employment figure that comes out is going to be scrutinized big time. We want to see hiring back, not firing out of, of workers, Frank, right? There's so one tomorrow, the jobless claims tomorrow morning? I, yes, uh, we're going to look at the uh, econ calendar. Um, I, I, I believe there is. I don't have that on top of my head. So anytime that you see them uh, showing a positive number or a number that is uh, lesser claims, uh, jobless claims versus higher jobless claims is going to be looked on by the market as uh, as positive and the shorts are going to cover. So futures Frank, are down. I, I confirm. Oh, sorry, ahead. Frank, to interrupt. I, I just want to confirm there there is a, there is a jobless claims tomorrow for sure at 6.30 or uh, yeah, in the morning before the market opens, I should say. Okay, yeah, 8.30, they normally come out. So we're gonna look, yeah, so we're going to look at the, the econ calendar to see you know, what else is uh, uh, important coming up this week. So saying all that, guys, um, let's, uh, let's start off with uh, two proprietary charts that I follow. And uh, let me bring them in. We're going to go backwards. Um, these charts are, sorry about these stupid ads. Uh, these charts focus on this part. These charts are things that I look at uh, um, almost every day. This is your New York Stock Exchange McClellan Oscillator. For a full definition of this, please go to Investopedia and uh, it'll explain to you. It's a momentum indicator, very important one. Basically shows overbought, oversold conditions. And as you can see here, when we, cra when we crashed in, um, and please you feel free to listen to my videos from that March 23rd period, what I said, how extreme these readings were. And, uh, and, 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 and I said one more the other, you're gonna see a severe bounce. How quickly it was gonna happen, uh, I didn't know, but I was dead right on the directional bias. At that time, McClellan Oscillator went to a historical low that no one had ever seen, uh, which was uh, both uh, uh, at the beginning of March as well as on March, uh, um, as well as mid-March. And by the time the market bottomed, which was March 23rd, it was actually rising. It went to minus 139, unheard of, unheard of, okay? Because generally at minus 62, minus even minus 40, minus 70, if I go back a little bit more, minus 80, those means the market has gone through a quick two to 4% type of correction. Dow Jones down, you know, 1,000 plus points, whatever the case may be, everybody's jumping into the bunkers in a big way. Fear is rising, uh, VIX is rising tremendously. It's basically just like complete dead fear. So that's when you start printing these negative numbers. So when we printed this number of minus 138, it was bound to happen, one way or the other, coronavirus or not, that the world, I mean, at that point, it was just the world was ending, right? It was, it was, it was over, the U.S. economy is over, nobody wants to touch stocks, you know, things just went to hell in the handbasket. I mean, look where stocks came from. You know, I was looking at certain stocks, I'm like, my God, why wasn't I in it? But we did so well on the other stuff. I was looking at the overstock. The thing went to $2, it's at 23. You know what I'm saying? It's up, you know, it's a 10 bagger. And that's overstock. So things just went out of whack. So bottom line is, uh, after it did, we came back. Um, we went, uh, we did a uh, exact um, equal uh, 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 standard deviation from zero. We went to plus 119. At that point, the markets did correct. 
comes down, never went into negative uh, 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 zone. And basically, as you can see here, these are the day, these are the times that the market goes into those two, three, four day type of correction. And um, and things go into the red. I'm just showing, explaining a very simple way for our new members. And so if I do show it during the day on the Twitter feed, you know what I'm showing. And uh, and then we and then as of uh, the last two days, we overshot again. We went up to almost 113. Uh, these are extremely high readings, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Uh, these are the readings which are telling us that on a technical basis, things are getting a little too hot to handle. Doesn't matter with every stock or not. You know, I'm just talking general market condition. This is the New York McClellan oscillators, the stock exchange McClellan oscillator. And so now we are we pushed pushed back over the last uh, 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 72 hours, and we are we closed today. This is today is the 10th of June. Good. Uh, we closed today at uh, 25. The directional bias of this is telling me that we are going to come down and retest possibly this zero level, the break-even level. I just want you to just look at the pattern. Indicators are also telling me that we are in for a quick, uh, 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 that, the, the, that the short-term lows have not been put in yet. That's what it's telling me. Could be dead wrong. Um, and if I look at the full stochastics here, which is the second derivative of, and we use this on stocks all the time, as you know, um, full stochastics, which is the second derivative of the relative strength index, showing the underlying strength or the buying, you know, uh, 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 sort of a buying power, if you want to look at it, of the underlying of the overall market, it's clearly telling us that it is coming in for a quick reset. This is called a reset. This is when you're overbought. This is when you're oversold. Now, it doesn't have to come down below 20, but generally when it goes over 80, you create a short-term top, as in the market goes into a, and these are all technical stuff because the market is purely, literally, I would say 99% technical, all right? So the mechanics of it uh, dictate that if you get overbought, which I'm showing with a plus sign, you have to get oversold. Now, it doesn't have to come below 20. It can come to that 50 level right here and bounce from there. In a strong market, it's done that quite a few times. It comes down uh, and, and then it bounces before it uh, hits, uh, um, before it hits, uh, goes below 20. If it goes below 20, that means the market on a short-term basis is quite over oversold. You can come into the same stocks that move up five, 10, 15, 20 dollars, and you can make uh, you can make a quick profit as it as, as they tend to bounce. This was an aberration. I repeat what happened back in the March, uh, late March period. And this is, un, this is uh, these are black swan events, unquantifiable events. In this particular case, it was the virus, as well as the fierce uh, oil price drop propagated by the Saudis and the Russians. Now they have, you know, agreed on oil cut outputs and stuff. It's terrific. So it was a double blow. And the market just went into a uh, um, serious free fall. And of course, the virus, there was the nail in the coffin, right? So no pun intended. So bottom line is that uh, this is uh, certainly uh, showing some weakening. And uh, and I'm, I'll be uh, keeping a um, uh, close eye on it. I don't want to go any further with that. But it is telling us that. But every single time it did pull back since the March 23rd rally, it tended to bounce right off here. So we're not that far from here. So any type of weakness could be stopped right there. Any type of weakness could uh, could be stopped right there. So let's see what happens. The second proprietary chart that I look at is the SPX 533. Hey, Frank, and can I ask you before you move on? Go ahead. I, I was just, uh, just back to your original chart. Um, the weekly um, view looked a little bit more bullish, uh, still kind of, possibly overbought uh, and then uh, no, well, hold yeah. up let me stop you for a second okay. first of all i'm okay. going to stop you for a second and say thank you i totally forgot to do that all right i told you i was tired so this is the what paul just uh, uh um uh, paul just mentioned and reminded me a uh, very constructive reminder is let's take a look at the weekly of this uh, picture which uh, goes out a little bit more so on the weekly you can see we have more room to move let me get the pen you can see here that we do not have a crossover down we call this crossover downs of the MACD we are still 
heading higher. And that brings me to my point that we will end the month of June based on reasons I explained very clearly on Sunday, which is from the money management standpoint of institutional and fund managers and hedge funds to June 30 had been the end of the second quarter. So despite this quick mid-month pullback that we normally get, we do get that quite often, almost 80% probability that you get a, a quick sharp pullback. Well, we already had three days of pullbacks anyway, if you think about it. Um, you generally, uh, uh, it, then the market bounces. So on this one, this is a plus. It's still doing fine. This is a plus. And this one is uh, coming into this dotted line here, which is the mid Bollinger, which is uh, pretty much, you know, just a little, you know, probably another 100 points or so, and you could get that. So this is the weekly one. So this is the point you wanted to bring out, right, Paul? Yeah, and, and what's really interesting too is uh, it's almost like two different markets out there. You got the SPY, you got the Dow, and you got the NASDAQ yeah. doing crazy stuff. There's that momentum indicator, the NASI, uh, and the yeah. weekly looks really interesting on that too. Yeah, I used to look at the NASI too. One second here. I remember that. Okay, that's the, that's the NASDAQ McClellan summation. Uh, this is the NASDAQ version of, uh, of the New York Stock Exchange things, and that's a good point that Paul brought out. That's a kind of a sec, you know, little bit, you know, the market, remember, market is, 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 is very sector orientated. You know, they, uh, fund managers are, are, are just going nuts on buying companies which have serious growth potential, regardless of a slowdown in the economy. And those are the software companies. Those are the Teslas. Those are the Facebooks. Those are the Netflixes and the Apples. Uh, just to give you some, some example of it, the chip sector, fantastic AMD. Nvidia, Square, that's on the uh, you know that's on the uh, uh, digital payment sector, and then you got all these other companies which um, which they are piling in hard because the growth prospects of those companies are very very strong. So there's always a sector rotation. You know you could have the Boeing down twenty dollars and then you have uh, Nvidia up eleven dollars, right? So that's the point that Paul was trying to make, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, it just feels like there's a ton of rotation and there, it's almost like the market's grinding up on rotation and sometimes it'll be well, hot stock it, one day and then quiet. Yeah, yeah. so so I, I agree with you. The, the rotation, you know, like I mentioned it months and months ago, I uh, I remember asking people, not months ago, two months ago in March, and uh, that uh, three months ago in March, I said, what if the industrial start picking up? What are you thinking? What, where, where could Boeing take us? Just think about it. And I was dead right. So this is how it happens. You know, you could be down on tax one day and Boeing's up 15 bucks and the stock will be bouncing very shortly. Um, again, I'll show you the chart. So the fact is that, yeah, there's always sector rotation in the market, which keeps the market up to a certain level. Also, there's going to be S&P 500. There's talk about S&P 500 adjustments. There's a lot of, uh, uh, and, and there'll be companies which will be added to the Dow Jones Industrial Average more growth type of companies because the companies that are really in the Dow Jones industrial average right now are like, you know, grandpa's like, you know, uh, the old fashioned companies. So to represent more of the new economy of the United States of America, which is basically very high growth tech driven companies, don't be surprised addition of companies like Tesla into the S&P 500. And, and and you can imagine, you know, what that's going to do for the thing. But I don't want to get into that. That gets a little bit in, in, into more uh, you know, advanced stuff. We have limited time here, but uh, I'll certainly talk about that. And I'll certainly talk about that in my training sessions with my uh, ACS students. So when you look at the NASI here that uh, Paul uh, uh, pointed out here, which is a NASDAQ, all right? So these are the, these are the tech stocks, the high growth stocks. And the NASDAQ 100, just keep in mind, also includes powerful biotech stocks. And uh, you can find the, what companies are in the NASDAQ 100 just by typing it in Google or just going to the NASDAQ. So bottom line is here, you have a check mark looking great. You have a check mark looking great, still telling us you can go higher. This is looking great. The crossover up keeps on building and the full stochastics is uh, overbought, but moving sideways. So again, point that uh, you know Paul, Paul reminded us to look at is basically the NASDAQ is where the action is, and that action at this point looks like it wants to continue. Now, it doesn't mean that every day you're gonna be up on those stocks, but it simply means that there's more room to move. Uh, let's make, uh, let's look at, uh, so we looked at that. Oh, 
let me bring in my uh, this one. This is the S&P 500, 533, we call it. Um, that's one second here. That's simply because the full stochastics has the percentage K, you know, that's a, that's the parameters of the thing, percentage D and stuff. That's why it's called SPX 533. That's what I call it. Uh, and this is uh, what how I'm reading it. Is everyone with me so far? Because we're just talking pure technicals here, all right? Yep. Kinda? Okay, yeah. You don't have to like really get into this stuff. You just, uh, the, uh, let's put it this way, you know, to keep it simple, um, uh, the KISS principle, right? Is just, uh, so when I'm showing it, at least you'll understand what you're looking at. And that's that's pretty much, you know, my uh, purpose of showing these things. So here, um, we, we can clearly see here, this is downtrending. And and the, and the best uh, entry points are generally when it uh, goes below 30 or there. See that? Every single time, and then the market bounces. Every single time, the market bounces. Look at this, okay? You have the MACD, which is still climbing, still in positive territory. It has obviously flattened the curve a little bit, right? Uh, I'd like to see this um, stronger. and uh, and And basically, Obviously, the first surge from that March 23rd low, it was the strongest, and that's why the MACD, which was way down here, went uh, uh, went berserk. So right now, it's still very good. We can clearly see here that we are starting to see a crossover down. This pattern is still a bull flag, but that bull flag doesn't mean that it come down and, and that it cannot test. We closed at uh, 3190, so if it tests 3150, that's 40, point, 40, hand, uh, 40 points down on the S&P. So that's roughly about factor of eight, like I look at it, that's roughly another 320 points down on the Dow, which you can have very easily without damaging the overall picture. So just keep that in mind. Uh, can we come down to 3,100? Sure we can, sure we can. So if we, we closed at 3,190 today on the S&P, if we come down to 3,100, that's 90 points. That's good, you know, if you just do not have any hedges or if you're just sitting there saying, no, 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 everything's going to bounce in the next 10 minutes, you are going to get hurt, all right? Because this is a this is going to be a drop of minus 720 points on the, on the, on the Dow Jones. Just keep this in mind. So, but on the charts, it doesn't make that much of a difference. So we have to keep this in mind. Generally, this happens in the middle of the month. I'm telling you right now. So if we look at the dates here, the 15th is Monday. So give or take plus minus two or three days, starting, I don't know, the 12th, which is Friday, up till the 16th or so, or 17th, which is next Wednesday, you could see the market reset. Even as it tries to uh, uh, rally during the day, if uh, if the technicals are not moving higher, they will sell it between that 3 or 4 p.m. period. It's just the way it goes, you know? All right, let's move on. Now, let's take a look at the charts that all my members, uh, 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 you know, should use as very effective tools. And that is this. I, be, I showed it all day today. These are just pure structural, sym uh, 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 structural symmetry, geometric patterns. You can see that. There was a gap here. There was a gap here. This was the jobs number. That gap is 3135. We are right now at 3181. This is the actual E minis. We're at 3178, actually. So we're at 31. Let's call it 3180. Let's keep it simple. So if we drop from 3180, just giving you some, you know, what can happen over the next 24 to 72 hours, okay? I have seen a lot of times that this is an exact pattern symmetry. Okay, we came down here. We attempted to bounce. Looks like we're going to go, and then they just gave in. So if you do the, uh, if you do, if you just draw, you know, if you draw the same pattern, then you come down to retest this level here. 
So that's another 25, 35, 45, 45 points. 45 times eight is another 360 points on the Dow that you can have for whatever reason. And one could be the jobless claims, but one could be anything else. And we'll look at the economic calendar at the end of this uh, webinar. So this pattern, in my opinion, between now and the 16th or 17th of June will, will uh, in my opinion, will retest. And I've seen this happen way too many times because one of the ways, the simplest way to explain it, you got a big number of short positions that got squeezed big time and they want to recover some of the money. So what they do is they'll short the market up here. And this is certainly on a short term basis, a double top, head and shoulder. So they'll, they'll short the market to recover their money as it comes down and retest there. So whatever they lost here, they make back here. It happens over a multi-day period. Are you guys with me so far? Yes? Yes. No? Okay, yes. so this is so this is the chart that I follow on an intraday in, in, in like during the day, because this is this is going to tell me if what is the possibility is a 15 minute chart. It's a lot of zigzags because each candle is 15 minutes and the market just zigzags around like a monkey on a hot thin roof um, on a volatile day. And I said that right at the start of the day before the market started that the market was going to be volatile today, and it certainly was, no question about it. So aside from that, you still made money, and that's the essence of trading markets alone don't dictate whether or not you're going to make money or not if you are positioned right and uh, you, you hit some of these uh, high flyers you're good you're good to go you're good to go walk away from the screens there were a lot of stocks which are green some were red um, but that's just the way it is so, all right, so this is where I think it goes. And this, again, should be a strong buying uh, 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 buy level, entry level. Remember that we were trading in a sideways band and then we broke out on the jobs data. So coming back and retesting this level is, is not a terrible thing. And I, I believe it can happen. Now, that's a 15 minute chart. If we look at the one hour chart where we're zooming out, remember each candle on the one hour has four 15 minute candles built in. It's a simple concept, but a lot of people uh, forget that. So this is your one hour chart. Come on, come on. Taking time to reload. There we go. So here's your one hour chart. This is still a bull flag consolidation. That's why I draw these lines, okay? This is uh, a new member should uh, certainly uh, educate themselves on chart pattern analysis. A great video on the new member intro video. Scroll down. It was done last year, I believe, or the year before, uh, explaining to a completely brand new members what these chart patterns are all about. You can Google it on YouTube and, and somebody else. Learn it. Get to know these patterns. So, um, so this is uh, this is certainly around the top. So what that means is. Retesting again, this was the level that I just showed you with that jobs number, right? And the market just just completely demolished the shorts. We were long, it was fantastic. So um so coming back and doing this, <coughs> and it just uh, uh just get used to pattern coming back and doing this is not necessarily a bad thing to do. And then the markets try, attempt again to go higher. However, if we break each of these red lines, especially this one, that's at the 3128 level. I told you that's uh, how many points? That's another 360 points on the Dow. If we break this level, then we will again come into the next red line, which is 3100, um, and um, and the, the, there's enough support uh, at, at this zone for the market to bounce. But we shall see. We shall see. One step at a time. I can only do predictive analytics based on what I see on my charts but if certain levels are breaking down then obviously as a technical trader 
and that includes all of you who are trying to learn technical, you have to change your mind. We're not dogmatic, okay? We're not stubborn. We're not like, no, it has to be this way. No, 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 it doesn't have to be that way. So technical traders can, on a dime, change their mind if the technicals on, are on, on many different fronts are changing, you have to change accordingly. I want all of you new, new traders to understand that. This is not a game of like, uh, oh yeah, I know it has to happen that way. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm overall bullish. Markets are longer term are bullish, but short term, if things change, I'll change accordingly. So, so that's, that's really where I think uh, the markets are gonna stop. But in the meantime, there's one level of support here and that uh, might be engaged uh, tomorrow morning. But if the market goes up, remember, this is a rising wedge. This is known as a rising wedge. So we had this powerful breakout over the rising wedge right there. So now what we're doing is we're coming back and retesting that rising wedge right there, attempting to hold it. In a strong market like we're in, it generally can bounce up again. But if it does break that, it creates what we call a bull flag, okay? So if we didn't have this big move up here, we would have certainly had a pullback here looking like this, which would then bounce higher. A bull flag is called a bull flag because it, it's this is a profit-taking uh, channel that can last anywhere from one to three days or even in one day. And then it continues on its primary trend, which is this. Does everyone understand that concept? Yep. Exactly. So that's why it's called a bull flag. So I'm just just making it real simple. You don't have to overcomplicate these matters. All right. Uh, so basically at this point, notice what it's doing. Futures are down seven and a half right now. They were down about 14. They were down, futures were down actually 22, I believe. Right after, uh, like right after six o'clock, right? Something like that. Yeah, they were. And um, so right now we're back within the rising wedge as I just showed you. Look at that. The and the NASDAQ's green. And the NASDAQ is green, the NQ. Paul specialized on the NASDAQ, so that's why, you know, so just so you guys keep that in mind. So let's take a look at the same picture on the SPX. Still looking good, but there are signs of minor weakening. Remember, the S&P 500 is not, it's a static, it's, it's not, uh, uh, it doesn't trade. The E-minis trade, which are the, you know, which, which are the futures based on the, underlying asset, the S&P 500, the E-minis, but the S&P 500 stops trading at 4.15 p.m. Actually, it closes at four, but you can, you can still sell the options till 4.15 or 4.20. So bottom line is um, you can see what's going on here. And this is like really detailed look at things. This is your rising five-day moving average. This is a channel that I had drawn. That channel is 31.69. We are at 3190 right now. I'm in 3180 right now. Uh, we closed at 3190. So even if we come down to 3170, let's say 3174, you've given up 25 points. Right there is 200 points on the Dow. Just coming down here. Just coming down here is like 200 points on the Dow. Doesn't change anything. But all of a sudden, somebody look in the market like, oh my God, we're down 200 points on the Dow. It doesn't do anything uh, to uh, to damage. The damage starts occurring where you get automated sell programs going into play. The shorts come in, standard procedure. Um, a lot of uh, uh, retail traders who got in late start to scramble. Margin calls come. Is if we this was a big big breakout. I expected the market to go here and then pull back, but it didn't. It just shot up. That was last Friday. Yep, last Friday on the jobs data. So coming back and retesting the 3135 level, I showed you that on the other side too, on the other chart, is is common procedure, but it is it, it's standard procedure, not common, standard procedure. So basically, again, I repeat, dropping 50 points, losing, is it 50? 55 points, losing 500 points on the Dow, is don't freak out, but you have to be positioned right. 
Because if you're not, and you have calls expiring the following two days, you're going to get blown up. So just, you know, I mean, just, just letting you know. Uh, swing setups and stuff on certain stocks, I'll buy them cheaper if the prices come down. But the best way to, when people ask me, like, how do I protect myself? Well, we do the hedges. I told people to buy the SPY 320 puts yesterday, which closed at a buck 55. They went to $3 today. Okay? So originally when I told people to buy it, they were around two. Then they went down to a buck 40 something and I bought a little bit more. My average cost was a buck 75. They went to $3. That's good for 70% on your money when the market started coming down. I sold most of mine slightly before three. So it's always good to have some hedges, insurance uh, on, on, uh, on, on, on these type of things, just so you understand that. And I'm going to, um, the second thing that's happening here, uh, which one has to appreciate, okay, on the externals. Externals are basically the picture of the charts. These are internals. I have enough introductory videos for new members on the new member intro on YouTube explaining what these, what externals are like going to a doctor who looks at you and you're, you know, you're, you're looking like a, a, a really sick. He knows you're sick. He doesn't know what's really wrong with you till he does the series of blood tests and stuff. Those are the internals, all right? Those are the internals on the market. All right, let me, let me finish and I will take questions later if somebody's trying to ask anything. Bottom line is, look, this is a very simple rule of the thumb. This is your, the, 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 uh, these two lines here, these two lines here are, this is the orange line is a 34 day moving average. This is the one that I use. You can use whatever moving average you want. Uh, oh boy, I gotta put it in yellow, hold on. 34 day moving average, okay? This is the 50 day moving average. They're both looking pretty damn good. You had a crossover here, Remember, the market's bottomed on March 23rd. The crossover of this thing didn't happen till May. That's just the way it goes. If somebody was waiting for this crossover, this is the bullish crossover of the 34 and the 50, then they missed out on this huge monster rally. However, even if they bought in here in May, they still, they first got thumped after two days. Okay, that's just the way it works. And then, and then if they stayed long, dollar cost average and do whatever you know uh, they needed to do uh, buy they, they they enjoyed this move here so this move can still go into this 3300 range I explained this in my Sunday webinar I don't want to repeat myself again okay that's another 100 points from here 110 points plus that's another uh, almost six to eight hundred points on the Dow it, it can happen okay however on a very short term basis the distance move, these are the highways the market likes to travel on. They don't want to move too far away from the highways. So at this point, you're starting to see the market moving up. It's called the standard deviation from the, from the moving average. There's something called the mean reversion. It gets too overbought. It likes to revert back to the mean. It does not mean that we have to come all the way down to 3,000, in which case we are going to drop 1,600 points on the Dow doesn't mean that it simply means that if it moves too further away like it did here during the during the uh, uh, COVID crisis which was unheard of you know this was a standard deviation of God knows what minus nine maybe more this is a standard deviation of probably plus three here so we're not like really crazy overbought but at the same time if we shoot up more then the markets will start to um, markets will basically have a nice two to four percent four percent correction and it's going to feel like hell if somebody doesn't know what the hell they're doing all right so uh we don't know yet but just passing it on to you guys now saying all that the other thing that i'm watching is this this isn't very strong uh the, the full stochastics are very strong they're staying above 80 in between you know in between little red days it's still above 80, but we're starting to see the first signs of a crossover. It doesn't mean anything. It did the same thing here, but continued forward. However, if I see it crossing below 80, that's the crossover down, as I call it, then that means the markets are going to come into a much sharper drop. Remember, markets very seldom 
will give you a signal. All of a sudden, it'll start to change its, 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 its technical dynamics, its nature. And as people get more fearful, as the machines start pushing things down harder, it cascades. So that's why markets, you know, markets cascade down. You know, they don't just like, uh, um, they don't, uh, one day you might be short, you might be losing money. And then two days later, that same spy put is up 300%. It's just the nature of the beast. That's that's unpleasant. You know, I'm just saying. So on a daily basis, it's still everything's still good, but we're going to be watching this very carefully. That's your that should that should uh, daily chart. Let's take the same look at the e minis here. The e minis are again. I repeat, the 3135 is a level we can easily retest. However, Given the strength of how powerful this market is and Boeing, which we're going to look at the next chart, which itself, as I said, can drive the market up three, four hundred points like it did just within the past week. OK, and then and, uh, and, and we nailed it on Boeing is Boeing starts to turn because it's pulled back nicely, starts to turn. I'm going to set up that chart and bring it in. You will see this bull flag here. That's a bull flag. Three red, uh, three red uh, candles. Okay, you're gonna see this market like shoot up higher. Is everyone with me so far? Yep. Yep. That's a bull flag. It is no longer a bull flag if it breaks below this. In that case, you know that's that's just a retest of this uptrend channels. The channels are, are very very uh, uh, linear. It's very straight. So. So yeah, so it's still a bull flag. This is the same story here, starting to you know cross over down a little bit. Nothing too alarming, but has to be watched. Let's take a look at now. While Paul's there, and I know he's going to ask me, let's take a look at the QQQ. Why not, right? And I know you've been trading the QQQ quite a bit, Paul. Not not the index, but just a, a bunch of the top uh, holdings in it. Excellent. So this is the QQQ. You can see how powerful it is. It is a seriously, obscenely beautiful breakout. I missed the last run on the QQQ because we were doing so well on the other stuff. Um, but this is this is a, this this is a breakaway continuation pattern. So even if it pulls back, I mean, look at this. It's just like, it just broke away. That's on the jobs day. And then here it is where we are. So this is telling us it is getting a little bit, little bit, you know, too stretched, but we don't know yet. And if we look at the daily, there's nothing here that's technically wrong, nothing on the QQQ. I mean, this tells us that you could have any one of the other monsters in the queues, uh, Regenerons in the queues, by the way. So um, I believe it is, yep. That alone, and they should they should be in, uh, uh, starting their human trials any day now. Imagine they come up with one good news, boom, gone. See you later. Again, gone. And it's already doing well, but I'm talking like a 40-point move higher. You can wonder where the where the where the Nasdaq 100 goes or the Qs. Um, let's take a look at the weekly. And weekly is like seriously. I mean, what can I say? I mean, technically, there's absolutely nothing wrong in this picture. It just, it's just, it's gonzo. Uh, but right there, I tend to get a little bit cautious because when it looks too good, um, I tend to be a little less aggressive. But it's very good. There's no question about it on all fronts. Very powerful breakout. Very powerful breakout. Generally, on a breakout like this, you get one more green candle. It's called three marching soldiers. So that means uh, 250 on the queues are very doable. 250. Okay. So another candle pulls back a little bit, still stays green, and then goes up here like this. Watch. Candles don't stack on top of each other. That's one thing I want all you new members to understand. What, what do I mean by that? You have a very powerful candle. It pulls back a little bit, then it goes higher, big time. Then it comes down, pulls back, and that's a pretty sharp pullback. 
on a one week basis, then it creates another uh, uh, hammer. So candles don't, even though it's rising every single week, don't get fooled by thinking, oh, it was a huge green candle. You just made yourself, let's say 120% on the Q calls. Don't expect the next day for it to stack up on top of each other. Candles don't stack up on top of each other. I just want you guys to understand. Candles pull back, then they create another one, pull back, create another one. That's the reason why you need to take profits on big openings on the market. Re-enter as the market intraday pulls back and then turns around. And you can clearly see, see here, none of these candles, none of these candles stack on top of each other. Do you know what I'm talking about? This is called the stacking. Like exactly, oh, it went up that much to tomorrow from 9.30, it's just gonna keep on going higher. No, it doesn't. Because the next morning, there's always some profit taking, always some profit taking, always some profit taking. Are you guys with me so far? Yes. Yeah. Now, now the reason I say that is because what happens with a lot of retail emotional traders who are not used to looking at the markets the way we do as purely robotic tactical traders, they freak out. When, the, when it does a little bit of pullback, like, oh my God, you know, then they sell and they see the same thing going higher. So whatever they made a little bit, they could have made a lot more. Or sometimes they lose because they're all freaking out like a lot of people did on Tesla yesterday. I got DM saying, man, that was a really painful day. It's, who cares? Deal with pain. And well, how much did Tesla go up today? Because the technicals were not broken. So what's the big deal? And these were 1,100 calls, they put like, you know, which went up a gazillion points. So that's what I'm saying. Don't get freaked out just because the market opens up and comes down. The futures are down 12. I want the market to open down tomorrow morning. I do. Because that'll satisfy the retest levels I explained to you guys. You can reload a little bit more and go in for the, you know, for the kill into Friday. Let's see what happens. So when it does, so just repeating it, because this is what the fundamental flaw of a lot of human traders are. They just keep thinking that if they bought something, it has to go up in a straight line from that point. It never happens like that. Yeah, it sure happens like that. I mean, of course, you know, a bunch of times, but generally speaking, you buy a call at two, it is, and especially on the indices, the, there's very high probability, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to go to one first before it goes to four. So get used to that. So you don't have to jump in and buy everything at two bucks. Let's say you want to buy 10 calls. Just giving an example. So buy four. If it slips down towards 150, buy two more goes to one. This is all depending on the charts. So that's, that's why my charts are so critical. And this part, I say entry one, entry two, entry three, I'm dollar cost averaging. But I can't do that on every single stock that I'm putting out there. It's not humanly possible for me. I'm sorry. These are things you guys have to learn on your own. And the people who have signed up for the ACS sessions that I'm going to be working with them, I'll show them this whole concept of dollar cost averaging. And there are some free videos on that on my Google, uh, on my YouTube channel under new member intro, okay? So then uh, you buy another uh, uh, four here, maybe at one. So by this time, your cost average is, uh, 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 your cost average has come down substantially. Here you paid eight, one second, 800, you paid 300, you paid 400. This is called cost averaging, okay? It is a most critical component of trading volatile markets. If you are not ready to cost average, you will never, I should say never, but very low probability that you'll make serious money. Just letting you guys know this, because that's just the way it is. 
So you break down, you scale in. That's what we call scaling in. So 800, 300, 1100, 1500. You have 10 calls now at 1500. Your average cost now is a buck 50. Okay? So did I do it right? Yeah, 300, 400, 7, 8, 15. Yeah, buck 50. So when it zooms up to four or even three, you just made yourself 100% on your money. You see this happening every, you know, every other day. I mean, it's right there. Show it to you guys. Yeah, but if you sat, if you bought 10 here, if you bought four here and just sat there, scared and didn't dollar cost average even though you're cash on the sidelines and it went to three you'd only make 50 percent see the difference so you here you have 10 calls you sell at three you sell uh uh 1500 goes to 3000 you just pocketed 1500 which is very nice profits for a normal account it's very nice profit and how much did you make here? If it goes to three, so you made 1200. So you made $400 here. Would you like to make 400 bucks or 1500 bucks? So that's, that's really what cost averaging is all about. Are you guys with me? These are very simple, but yeah. effective, effective concepts. All right. So it's not rocket science, but I want to show you Boeing, and then I'm, we're going to look at the most dangerous chart of all, or the VIX. So here's Boeing. All right, what a beautiful chart. I'll frame him and sell it on Etsy or uh, or or Amazon, called Tactical Art. I'm sure somebody will buy it. They say, "Wow, that's a picture of Boeing. Nice." Put it up for like hundred bucks, or put it on eBay. They'll have a bidding war for it. I love this chart. Just the way I structured it, I just love it. You know, you don't have to. You got this little cloud cover, and it's a flight map, guys. It's a flight map. It's not a road map. It's a flight map. Boeing is a plane. It's an aircraft. All right. So again, repeat. We got in around here. We got in around here, and the stock just went berserk. He was a gap fill, almost got there. Then, now it's doing this. I believe Boeing's a buy between 197. Well, it actually went there. Why is it not showing on this chart? How strange. Let me see here. Um, Boeing basically is a buy between 187, right there. Call it 188 and 197. Where did the stock close at? 196 all right so this is the buy zone this is a this is a cup this is a handle as long as it holds this uptrend line of 187 i want to be a buyer of boeing will it come down to 187 188 i don't know we'll see it can but it'll be quick if it breaks 187, then the stock is in trouble. It's in trouble because the next level comes into play 160, 150, 140, and the hedge, the short funds are going to press it, press it, press it hard. You can short it if you want, but I wouldn't want to do that. You know, I might if I see a big break, but right now I don't see a big break. Do you guys see this chart? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Or are you just looking at the at this amazing artwork and just saying, wow? Boom. Okay, but you're getting, you, you're hearing what I'm saying. Boeing is a powerful, powerful trading asset. It should be one of the top 10 stocks you trade. Seriously. 737 max production, apparently they're pushing it to come in by the end of June. Hallelujah. That'll be something. You're gonna see this bull flag. This is a bull flag. Look. Just go bang. Stock will go straight up over the gap. 
250. It'll be another one of these crazy four day hundred plus point run up. I'm telling you. But first, it's got to close over this cloud cover or gap, and that's 250. So if I were to buy the stock at 196, where it closed today, and it goes to 250, that's 50 points. And you can buy these this stock $10 out of the money, sometimes $20 out of the money. So it's a good looking chart. It's a very good looking chart. It is starting to get overbought. It is overbought. I mean, it's kind of weakening a little bit. I do not want to see this crash like this, in which case the stock's going to come down to 170. So there's a lot of little things in play here, but so far so good. And Boeing alone can drive us up another six, uh, uh, four or 500 points without a problem. All right, let's take a look at, oh, while I'm here, my Regeneron's here, hold on. This is the different platform I use. This is the quad platform I explained on Sunday. You know, the guys at Billions don't even, actually didn't, I'm so exhausted. I didn't even see, I gotta catch it up, catch up tonight on the last episode of Billions. Hope the screen's moved, right? Told you, it's the most annoying thing ever. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. This is a hourly chart of Regeneron. Let's take a look at, this is the exciting one. This is the one for people who wanna stay long this stock, not keep on jumping like a monkey in a hot tin roof every time it's down seven and then by the end of the day, it's up three. They're like, hey, why the hell did I sell it? This is your, this is the chart I, like the most on a weekly basis. I tend to remain long and keep on shifting my calls out week after week, sometimes month after month, because not only do I like the company, uh, I, uh, the charts are just fantastic. So let's just do this. Here's your, here is your acceleration channel that started when the stock was 330 bucks back on January 31st of this year. Not too long ago, six months. Okay, right there. So let me walk you through where I think this stock on a longer term basis doesn't mean years and years. I'm talking, I'm talking maybe you know a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Can happen tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, who knows? I mean, they they they, they get successful antibody trials. This stock is gonzo. So, um, so see this channel, guys, right there? That's your macro channel. That means the stock's been traveling in this channel. Lots of heavy duty, like 50, 60 points. Look at that. But it's holding the channel. Are you guys with me? Yes. Okay, within the channel, we have a rising wedge. That's why I have the dotted line here. Upper end of the wedge is 640. Which calls do we have? 640 and 660. I don't just randomly like look and say the number. Oh, I'm going to buy 640. I like the number. No, I look at my charts. I make a determination. Okay, I'm going to buy those options. Why don't I buy them in the money? The stock's at 602 because they're too expensive. And the 640, 660 calls move very nicely. Move very nicely. I sold uh, the 660 calls was so cheap last week. And then they went up to $5 yesterday, sold a bunch. So this one, I believe upper end of the wedge is almost 640. And if it does have one of these type of breakouts on the COVID-19 antibody news or something like that, okay? They have so many other drugs on trial, but that's the most important one. It looks like it wants to do this. And if it does this, the stock is gonna blow through 700, your head's gonna spin. I call this the Tesla of the biotech world. The Tesla of the biotech world. That's my word, my opinion. So this is a good looking chart. Upper end of the thing is 700. Otherwise 640, 645. I'll take it. This is moving very nicely. That's the S stock, the granddaddy of the stochastics world. This is your regular stochastics, what we call the fast stochastics. That's even moving sideways. This is the one that I give credence to. Now, uh, more waiting to. Now, one of the things that I like is this. No signs of a crossover down. 
look, the stock went from 616 down to 576. It was nothing but a buying opportunity. In four days, it went from 622 when it burst up. The next day, it was down to 591. So all you had to do was, as it hit my upper range, sell that, sit there, buy a little bit here, buy a little bit here, buy a little bit here. And then by yesterday and today, you could have made a tidy sum. Because internals never gave up. That's the point. That's the difference between myself and a lot of other retail typical price chasing traders. We're just looking at price and missing out on the big money. Okay? So, you're the fucking man, Frank. Um, I don't know about that, but uh, last I checked, I was. Uh, just kidding. Um, I'm just, you know, look, I'm just looking. I try really, I'm telling you guys straight out, no bullshit, all right? I, every single day, I pick up something different from from my charts. And that is so important, and that's what I share with you guys. So on that respect, yes. I'm an effing man that, you know, that I'm passing on. This is not like some trade secrets. It's just the way I look at things. You know, it's not some formulated recipe like, hey, you pay me a thousand bucks and I'm going to send you a package like a lot of the trading services and you can self-teach yourself on this method. Yeah, right. Right? So, um, so I'm just, just showing it to you guys. Now, this is a very exciting chart. And now it's getting ready. We did very well on this because I told you guys to buy it when it hit my, it's so easy to read. Tell me somebody, it's not easy to read. Here, the red lines are your red line supports. You want to be buyers at that level. You want to be buyers at that level. A lot of the times I do this. I put these little markers. I put these little markers. This is definitive support on Teladoc a stock that we were long for a long time. And I still trade it. I just sold some Teladoc today. Teladoc is going to bust a move and go back to 205. You heard it here first, kids. This COVID thing is picking up steam in a bunch of Western states. Not a good thing. Teladoc and the COVID plays are going to be back in the game. And it is back in the game. I mean, the stock... The stock basically went up to 205. All right. We played a good portion of this move. And this. And every other day we play it. Then it went into a then it went into a multi-day fall. It went from two, 195 down to 150. How could you not buy it? That's why I said buy it. Just last week. Thursday or Friday. So this why is this exciting to me? Because it's Teladoc? No. Internals all are saying, buy me, buy me, buy me. All right? Seriously. I sound like a moron saying that. Um, Esta says, buy me now. All heading higher. Now, what's with this pattern that I like a lot? First of all, Teladoc is a staple of the new normal that we live in. At some point, when this stock enters this zone over 205, it's going to go to 290. I'm telling you right now. Well, it might take a couple of months, of course, not in one day. And if they do get bought out, any of the big health insurance companies like Anthem, United Health, Humana, Centene, all these big health HMOs, anyone can buy these guys. These guys have a fat contract with United Health. That's why I knew about the company when no one knew about it. Like, what is this company? This is like 40 some bucks at that time last year. And what if they if they get bought, they'll pay them at least 230 to 250 dollars on a buyout. Nice fat premium. Because they're a hot company. They're the probably one of the only single peer play on telemedicine. Not having to go sit in a crowded doctor's office, right? So aside from all that. Um, quick answers, please. I know you guys know all the answers, so. Bull flag, again, consolidation. 
a possible breakout, 204. Forget about going in here. I think it's about to happen. And I think it can start. I mean, it was up very nicely today. It was up eight points. I like uh, uh, the options on Teladoc tend to be a little slow moving, just so you know. The option Greeks on uh, characteristics of the Teladoc options are not like um, Netflix or Apple or Tesla. They tend to be a little bit less elastic. They move a little bit slower, just so you know that. So yeah, I think this stock is uh, uh, good to go. Let's see. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna start wrapping up. Let's take a look at the VIX. Uh, everyone uh, keeps an eye on my VIX post, I hope. It's very, very important to keep an eye on the volatility post. And what's the, what, my favorite term? Mommy, are we there yet, right? So, what does that mean with uh, mommy, are we there yet? Well, that's exactly what I mean. Is this starting to signify a major market top? Not there yet, but close. Somewhere between 18, somewhere between 1850, it's all there. You can read it, 1860 and 21, 1859 and 2186, call it 22. Two big markers. This is where the panic started in March. It's going to come, retest this gap. Doesn't have to be a full retest, but let's see. And boom, it's going to go after that. And then it's going to go straight to uh, uh, 36. It's going to happen real fast. That means the markets will drop anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 points, or at least 1,000 to 1,500 points on the Dow Jones. It's going to happen. I'm telling you right now. Somebody says, when exactly? Well, mommy, are we there yet? Are we at, at, at that gap fill yet? Show me the gap fill. I'm going short to a limited degree. Can it blow through the gap? Sure, anything can happen. But that's a low probability move. That means the market is just going to go bonkers. We're going to go to like 30,000 or 28, you know, we can, yeah, like 27, we're already there. Like 29,000 on the Dow if it breaks below that. Remember, it is, it's, Inverse, uh, 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 inversely proportional, it's an uh, inverse correlation to the markets. Does everyone understand the mommy are we there yet uh, chart? Now, yes. all of these are sh showing me we're getting close, guys. We're getting close. This is your big daddy of the ultimate signals, the S stock. Look, the S stock is almost there. Look. That's why I'm saying once this starts to turn, then rallies will become selling, uh, uh, rallies need to be sold. Once the, 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 the slow, uh, once the slow starts to turn, and it doesn't turn in one day and just keep on going, you know, it can just kind of slide, you know, kind of move sideways and then go. But once I see a crossover up, we are not seeing it. We haven't even come down to that mommy are we there yet point. You know what I'm saying? So we're close though. You see what I'm saying? Now, this is the weekly first green candle. One has to be a bit cautious because three weeks ago when they had this candle, we still told me we we're going to go down. In other words, the market will still continue higher. But that full week, the markets were down quite a bit. That was three weeks ago. Yet this was still pointing down. But we don't have the luxury of that yet. Uh, uh, we don't have that much of the luxury because it is getting towards that extreme oversold zone. So this is your bigger picture. So we're getting close to a sizable top in the market where we get a nice thump. So what's the next one? Uh, blah, 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 is Let's read the, 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 the smaller lines. So this one is the daily. That was the weekly. So this one, yellow, this yellow line here is the pivot. Okay, you can start to see we have a falling wedge. What do falling wedges do? Break out. Exactly. Rising wedges consolidate. There. 
So we didn't really get a substantial breakout because every time it tried to, it got thump, you know, it got slammed down. We call it slam down. But here, all of the markers are kind of telling me there is, there are some smart money who accumulating the VIX and VIX derivative products like the TVIX and the VXX and the UVXY. They're accumulating it, in my opinion, because this is start, three days in a row, it's got a green candle, but it could have another red candle for the next two days, who knows? Maybe it falls into this mommy, are we there yet? You know, right there, that's the gap, that's 20. VIX goes to 20, reduce your long positions immediately, take your profits, sit back a bit and put some hedges or shorts up. But VIX is at 25, no, sorry, the VIX is, yeah, 27. So this is starting to curl up. This actually broke out a little bit today over the downtrend line. So even if it pulled, you know, if, if it starts to get overbought, this is the fast stochastic that's telling me that once it gets overbought, it's going to come down again. So maybe we go, what I think is going to happen is the VIX is going to hit this upper Bollinger, which is right there. Upper Bollinger is what? What's the number here? 33. Most we get to VIX is 33. That's good enough for a 600 point drop in the market. And after that, it continues its downward trend within, within this downtrend line. See, that's a downtrend line. All right. So these are all like reading the tea leaves. I don't, you know, just give you a little flavor of a lot of things that I teach and, you know, it, 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 it's there. So um, what did it do on an intraday basis? This is what it did. What's the upper end of that? 30. This is what happens like during the day, each day. So if I clean out this, uh, if I clean this out, gentlemen, you can clearly see it's like a trading range in a stock, right? Watch. So this allows me to maintain my emotions and not get too greedy not get too scared but just to get an idea one second what the behind the scenes what those algos are trying to do okay so you if you this is a trading range we got three more points to go so that means the market pulls back a little bit i don't know but i'm just giving you an idea what can happen all right guys so uh any quick questions and we're going to wrap up and what time did we start? Nine. We started at nine. Nine o'clock. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't count time. Go ahead. Any quick questions? I got Grubhub. Yes, Grubhub. I sold some stock after hours. I still have the uh, cheap calls, the seventy calls. I sold uh, my stock, left a little bit in there at sixty-four dollars and change, and that was very nice because my average cost was 55 or so. So it was like, hello, uh, let's take a look at Grubhub. Uh, the stock did come down and sit at, uh, one second, let me take this out. That company, when it's an all stock deal, just remember this, they tend to, the stock, tends to move higher than eases back they're like why not just pay me cash at 70 bucks that's what would be the ultimate uh, buyout however i do believe that grubhub it's not a definitive thing there could be a bidding war on grubhub right so this is what happened so i'm happy with that that's why you know you could always buy a little stock guys you know seriously mike Buy like 50 shares, buy 100 shares, you know, depending on your account size. Because this way, when you do that pop up, your stock popped up, I'm like, nice, right off my iPhone. So I have one, uh, less than one third position left. However, I do have the cheap calls, which were today up the 70 calls were up 
from 14 cents to 40 cents at one point. You know, these are the, you know, you can, you can look at it. They were up 21 cents. They were up to 35 cents. So here is what the stock did after hours. Right there. Exactly. See, these lines were drawn before. Watch this. Watch this. So this is, this is my Grubhub chart. Best case scenario, there was a bidding war and the stock basically would get bought out at somewhere at this level. Look. What am I looking for? Okay, highlighted, yeah. See that? Stock went exactly where it had popped to. The machines are programmed to do that. Straight up to what 65. See that? And that's exactly what it did on the 12th of one month ago. We also were very lucky catching that spike. So to... Uh, 512, yeah. Today it did this. It went straight to that same level. Watch. There. That was May 12th. Went so this is a major support level for 60, 64 level. They did sell the stock down to 61, 65. Let's see what else develops. I'm hoping that um I'm hoping that there are other bidders who come into play or they work out so they get bought out at, uh, they have to get bought out at a premium. I mean, it would be terrible if they sold themselves out at 61.72. You understand what I'm saying? So that's basically, you know, where we stand. What we need to, it's not a tech, at this point, it's a takeover play. 65 is the upper end of the trading range. Lower end of the trading range is 55 where the stock could be bought hands down today, yesterday, and uh, I bought I, I bought stock here. I bought the calls real cheap. I, what did I pay? I paid like 15 cents in some cases, 20 cents. Those calls went to 40 cents, sold a little bit, holding most of it. Um, that's the beauty about buying extreme lottos. Because if the stock did get bought out at 70, those calls would be up like a gazillion point. So that's the answer to uh, Grubhub. Thank you. Sure. Who was that? It's Ed. Oh, okay. So next time, the trick is with those with these type of things, uh, you need to uh, buy a few stock too on the side if you can. You know what I'm saying? Because even if you bought, let's say, 50 shares, you know, uh, you'd make yourself 10 points on it. Like you can literally said that the advantage of having common is you can sell till 8 p.m. I do that a lot with the earnings. If they gap up a lot, you know, just sell it. So this way you covered, you took in some money. So if the small calls that you buy on the other side don't work out, you still made money. So try doing that, guys. Okay? I love doing that because, because you know, you, you can sell after hours. It's great. Tesla, I have nothing to say. I mean, this thing is just a beast. Okay? But expect like 15, 20 point drops in Tesla, like no problem. The stock closed at 1025. And it's at 10.09. So it's dropped 16 points already. You can't even see it on this chart. If the stock breaks 9.69, 9.70, that's when you start getting really worried. So that's that's uh, you know 300 points from here, right? 11.44. That's where I expect the stock to go. Uh, any other stocks you guys? Uh, who scalp you? That's the one and only Johnny Broadway. Oh, okay. You know, that's it. Scalp you. There you go, Mr. Johnny Broadway. So, um, any other uh, quick stocks you guys want me to look at? Because I got I to gotta wrap up. Hey, Frank, can you take a look at A, B, and D? Uh, still looks fantastic. Market was down the, 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 the 282 points. And our ABMD was up from 245 to 252 at one point, ended up, ended at uh, uh, 248. Forget the price, just look at the chart. This is the stock, you don't, I mean, this is, this is truly a long-term swing play. You want to sit with this baby. You want to buy it when it pulls back limit, as long as it does not break the trend. So again, same picture here. 
powerful breakout. Do read up on the company on the side. I think you'll like it more. Multi-year, like I said, falling wedge, big breakout. First level is this level here, which is around 290. That's where the big sell program came in back in August of last year. You can see that right there. That was one battery. Like some hedge fund said, see you later. Done. And the stock went from 300 down to 175. No fun. Happened in one week, two weeks. In my opinion, that's where it's heading up to. We're long the 270 calls June 19th. As we get close towards next week, I will buy July 17 calls. So far, everything is a okay as long as the stock does not break below 223. There's, you know, it's really, it's a good looking chart. And more importantly, I think I've done some homework on it. It's, you know, my opinion, I think the company gets bought out. So that's your answer to ABM uh, MD. Anything else that you saw that I didn't see, Al? No, no, not really. Okay. The other one that I like a lot is uh, AYX. I have traded this stock before. This one is a beast. Alterx. The name is like a beast out of a science fiction movie, right? Alterx. So, what did they do? They're into big. Read up on it, please. Serious companies that no one talks about. When was the last time you didn't say, "Oh, Alterx"? You know, I think Kramer talked about it once. I have no idea. I don't care. Um, they are into cloud software, database management for biotech industry. That's serious shit. I'm liking this chart a lot. We have played this range. We played it last year when I got to know the company. Now I expect the stock to go back to 160. So I put out a buy alert on that today, right? This is a range. This is a multi-week range range trade. Not much thinking to do as long as the charts look like this. A W pattern. Each candle is one week. So another two weeks or less, 160. I expected 170. So these are specialized names, you know, which are different than, and of course it's volatile. Some days you might just see it down four bucks for no reason. And you're like, hey, why, why did that happen? Don't ask me, it's, ask the hedge funds who are playing around with it, you know? But as long as the candles look like this, you want to be long these type of stocks. Uh, any other names, guys? Uh, I got two minutes. No? Yes? Okay, I'm going to wrap up, covered a lot of stuff, showed you the VIX, showed you the overall picture on the market. Markets are going to get a little choppy. Which one? When? Sure. Win went up a lot and then got clobbered over the last two days. When I first told people to buy win, well, this is my third round in win. This, this round, I'm not winning yet. First round, I won very nicely. When the stock went from 90, 86 to 95, something like that, then we bought the 98. It hit exactly, forget the weekly, let's look at the daily. There. So, win hit exactly the, from a technical level, this very heavy resistance, exactly there. It actually overshot that by little. 108.63. Once it hit that, you got this two-day run down and an exact bounce of something known for new members might not know this, called the Fibonacci 50. Look how perfect this kiss was. That should be a short-term low on the stock, which is 95 bucks or 94.72. So this 94.72 sh should act as a jumping station, you want a trampoline 
for the stock to head back towards 105, 110. Wynn was actually doing almost positive today till the market gave in because the high for this uh, uh, thing was 10340 today. It had actually gone up here and then ended down at 99. It couldn't do anything given the fact that the market was selling off and it fell under the pressure of being a NASDAQ stock. Also, bunch of uh, 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 this all this talk about all this talk about like you know COVID reappearing in Texas and other places and this and that might have worried some people as to how their reopening goes. I'm still bullish on this stock. I still think um, if we look out towards the latter part of this month and going towards the July 4th uh, uh, thing, when should deliver some strong announcements about the attendance and everything. So technically the stock is fine from an option standpoint. These two days clobbered uh, the, the, we had the cheap 110 calls because the bulk of the money was made here. And then the, it did hit 110, just like I said, almost hit 110. And then of course the sharp pullback. So it's technically nothing's broken. It's just that for this week, it's, I don't know whether it's going to bounce into Friday or not, um, but looking out into the latter part of June, those strikes uh, would work out. And again, I would stick to the 110 calls and the 105 calls to go with it. So that's, you know. Now, let me ask you anybody a quick question. Did anybody make any money on Tesla? I didn't hear anybody, you know, I mean, here on the, on, 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 on the webinar mention anything. I'm yeah, freaking rich and bull off Tesla. Are you kidding me? Huh? I'm not, yeah. I'm, I, I, I don't know kidding me or not. Who, who's happy with Tesla? What happened today? Me, me, me. Very happy. Okay. And very well. And Mr. Broadway, you, you know, you, you're a little bit worried about Tesla. What did you do? Did you have some? I was never fucking worried. I just kept buying more and more and more and cost averaging down and down and down. And I fucking killed it today. That's nice, man. That's what I want to hear. Uh, well, you were a bit worried because you sent me a DM, you know, very concerned about what will happen. And I deliver Tesla like a golden goose on top of you. All right. And the goose pop some big golden poo poo, you know, directly there. So I'm very happy to hear that you did well. And uh, there's You're nothing the wrong. You're there's the nothing man. No, there's nothing wrong with, um, and again, this is on a serious topic. There's nothing wrong being concerned about something. And uh, anybody can DM me with any questions um, on that, on, on different things. No one will know the exact answer, what's going to happen the next day. Uh, but certainly, I'm very happy that you guys did that. And especially when the lottos get below one, like just buy a bunch. And, you know, if it goes, it goes. And it really well, went, you know. I saying add, add, add. And I kept buying, 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 and boom. Wow, Frank, that's great. True. I, I, I honestly expected the 1,100 calls. The 1,000s were fine. The 1,100 calls yesterday were 97 cents. I expected them to at least go up to 10 bucks. So they only went up to 645, and I sold most of mine around five and a half to six. So yeah, it was a great 500% return, but, uh, but the ones which were the 1,000 calls, uh, those were the real killers. Uh, those had a little bit. Uh, those, guy, those guys went from 386 to 35 at one point. Uh, that's what you call a real, you know, baller move. And, <laughs> Fran, and, actually, and 31. actually yeah. went up to 46. I don't see 46 on, on, on this week's 1,000 calls? Yes. Then they didn't print 46. Must have been there for like a quick second or something. Uh, let me check. Um, I was just looking at my screen on the other side. Tesla. I wonder how much the shorts lost today. It must have been quite a few billion bucks. Easy. Okay, so we had the June 12th 1000. Bear with me one sec. I'm going to pull the chart in, okay? Give me one second. So 
it looks like it never went to 146. I mean, to 46, because this was the, these are the June 12th this week. When I told, you know, maybe you're thinking of the June 19th. Uh, June, the June, June 19, June 19. June 19, yeah. So these were the ones. So for newer members who weren't in it, no problem. You're going to, you know, some of these will come around. You just got to be in the game. Um, is This is what can happen. They were on Friday, they were 98 cents yesterday. And then they went up on um, on Monday uh, very nicely to $13. All right. get get like, Look at these numbers. They're obscene. All right, they were 98 cents on Friday. They went up to $13. All right, stock started to pull back on Tuesday, which, ladies and gentlemen, was yesterday. And I said, bye, bye, bye. They kept on going down. Uh, so this was itself a 1,200% return. So that means if you put $100, you took out $1,300. If you got a chance to sell it at 13, or even if you sold a little bit earlier, and if you put $1,000, you made $13,000. Real numbers, real alerts. And if you put in $10,000 on a larger size account, I guess you can, uh, on on the on the trade, sure, you made $130,000. Not bad. So, Frank. so uh, uh, don't tell me, man. This, this, that's you know, that's that's we're options traders. That's like serious money. You need to play. You know, these are like playing lottos. This is truly playing lottos. So with these type of companies, you find a lot of this stuff happening. All right, and then unexpected things happen in the other ones. Regeneron's done this too, by the way. Just so you know, that's why I call it. You know, um, such a powerful company. I call it the Tesla of the biotech world. So these are serious numbers, guys. All right. Serious numbers, and for a newer trader who's just coming in, playing with you know, little bit, little bit, wanting to grow their account, this is a very nice number too. You know, percentage-wise, it's all all the same. Now, here they were 97 cents. Here they were about a buck 20. And so, and they go to 35. Now this is beyond obscene. This is almost 35. Hundred. This was twelve hundred percent. This was this is uh, this is thirty four hundred percent in profit. Okay, thirty four four hundred percent. So if you put a hundred dollars down, let's say you bought one call, you'd be cashing out thirty five hundred dollars. That's overnight, guys. For newer members, they just feel this, all right? So, and if you put one thousand dollars, you'd be cashing out thirty-five k. Now, it, if you if you're trying to sell this at thirty-five, maybe they won't give it to you, the machines. So, let's say you sold it at thirty. Big deal. And if anyone put ten thousand bucks. They just cleaned that 350K and they owe me. All right? Big freaking time. Someone did that. It doesn't matter. We just need new referrals. We need good people in here. We need to grow the community to at least a thousand members minimum. That's the best you guys can do for me. I don't need compliments. I don't need your big talk. You're great and stuff. I don't care. I want to grow. This community, I want to keep on trading and learning faster and better, work with you guys as much as possible. That's all I want. All right? So this is where we're listening. Break your fucking ass and bring some people in this group. Let's go. Let's listen. do it. We're all doing good. Let's do this for him. Listen. Listen. Doing great. Let's do it listen. All other guys, other people have done that. I appreciate what you're saying. Talk is cheap. Show me the people. Get them to sign up. Get them to learn. And then come back and tell me, hey, I just, you know, do it. So let's make it happen. Others have done that. I know you well, just came in, Johnny. Anybody else. Awesome. I already awesome. got my prospects ready to rock to sign up. I'm just letting everybody else know what I'm thinking. Let, let I that's that's perfect. That's perfect. Let's let's see some good people come in. Anyway, guys, I gotta get some sleep. Uh thank you. Let's get more of these Tesla type of trades, but let's get be a little bit careful too. Uh let's not uh last thing I'll say, let's not personalize our losses too much. And let's not go too greedy. Greed kills. 
Be telling careful. You right right. Greed, love you greed, greed kills in, all, in every aspect of life. Uh, but greed is also important. Without greed, you wouldn't be an options trader. So quantifiable greed. That's what we do here. Unquantifiable, crazy, uh, emotional greed. I should say emotional greed kills. Quantifiable, tactical greed is very good. That's what you need to be an options trader or to trade the markets. So on that note, God bless you all. Thank you for attending. See you all later. Good night, Frank. Good night, Frank.